fun for me. How many of you think myocarditis is a rare disease? Raise your hand. Okay, you still think it's a rare disease. All right, here we go. The first challenge to fundraising for myocarditis is believing that it is a rare disease. And I'm going to read this because we're behind. And I, I have a lot to say in a short period of time. It has long been believed by the medical community that myocarditis is a rare disease, but is it? Is it really? The National Organization for Rare Disease defines a rare disease as fewer than 250 cases per year in the U.S. Our brochures from produced by the Myocarditis Foundation say that several thousand patients per year are diagnosed in the United States. But how many of them are not diagnosed? We surmise that a majority of the cases reported as diagnosed in the U.S. annually are diagnosed at major medical centers or heart transplant centers because that's the only place where they have the biotome to do a biopsy, where they have a pathologist to read it, where they have a cardiologist who knows something about myocarditis. Or I should say, you have your best chance of having somebody know myocarditis when you're at a heart transplant center or a trained, or as we were just saying, a cardiac pathologist on autopsy. There are approximately 5,700 hospitals in the U.S. and 110, roughly speaking, transplant centers. Think about that. Think about when you're going to the hospital, what that means in terms of your expectation to have your disease diagnosed. Americans assume that if they go to any hospital or to any doctor, that their medical condition will be accurately, correctly diagnosed and treated. How many cases of myocarditis presenting at a doctor's office or a hospital are misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed, or mistreated? Believe it or not, some physicians have never heard of myocarditis, and a smaller number who have heard of myocarditis have possibly never seen it. When I was in a heart hospital, a renowned heart hospital on Long Island in New York, they told me after, after my transplant and I was transferred out of there that they would never see my disease again in the lifetime of their medical practice. They've never seen it and they would never see it again. A renowned heart hospital. Okay. How many cases per year are not symptomatic so they never see a physician? One kind of myocarditis. How many patients are symptomatic, but they don't go to the doctor? How many patients are symptomatic, but they go to the ER and the disease goes unrecognized and they're sent home? How many cases are symptomatic and they go to the ER where they pass away? Sometimes an autopsy is never done. For religious reasons, cultural reasons, financial reasons, myocarditis may be suspected. But, a, but an autopsy is never done to confirm the disease. So is this really a rare disease? Myocarditis first appeared in the medical literature in 1900. So 213 years later, look where we are. Or better said, look where we're not. And it's only because of you and us that we're beginning to make headway that we're beginning to make headway. Doctors who graduated prior to uh, the past 20 years never had myocarditis taught in their medical programs. It's been on the licensing boards for cardiology and internal medicine for the past 20, 20 years. So think of that when you're facing a doctor. You know, 20 years used to seem like a lot when I was younger. But now when I, when I have a physician taking care of me, it's not easy to have, uh, you know, a physician older than me, but most of them are younger than me. But it's, but it's possible that your most revered and most respected older physicians may never have to been taught myocarditis in school. The second challenge to fundraising for the myocarditis foundation or for myocarditis in general is, is that myocarditis is really many diseases. And Lindsay's going to put up a chart for you to take a look at, which is out of Dr. Cooper's book, Myocarditis from Bench to Bedside, a book that was published more than 12 years ago. And um, it lists all of the causes 
of lymphocytic myocarditis. Can you see it? It goes from viral to bacterial to rickettsial to fungal to protozoal to spirochete to so on and so on and so on and so on. So uh, how many diseases do you know of that have one, one cause? These are all of the triggers to lymphocytic myocarditis. So when you present at an ER and you've got any one of these things, how is the doctor to know that to suspect right away myocarditis, aside from cardiac symptoms that you may or may not have? But, but these are all the things that could cause it. Myocarditis secondary to fungal, bacterial, so on and so on and so on and so on. It's really pretty astounding, I think. In the U.S., lymphocytic myocarditis is primarily viral in nature, specifically or primarily, especially in children. Some of the viruses have names and some of the viruses don't. They could just be your run-of-the-mill everyday flu that is virulent, in other words, very, very lethal to a small segment of people and and not lethal to 99.999% of people who get it. You understand what I'm saying? What about the incidence of myocarditis in the rest of the world? In rural, poor Central America, and I'm talking outside of the major cities, myocarditis is, has a different name and it's called Chagas disease. A beetle comes out of the thatched roof and or between the mud slats of their of their thatched roofed dwellings a beetle comes out and bites people and the beetle is infected with a protozoa and they if these people die of heart disease very 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 early in life between their 20s and their and mid 40s they die of cardiovascular disease but there's no way to get accurate statistics on this because there's no medical infrastructure. There's no hospitals, there's no doctors, there's no, there's no way to diagnose this. You know, we talk about the difficulty of diagnosing myocarditis in a hospital that's not a heart transplant center. Imagine trying to diagnose myocarditis in a, in a third world country. In Africa, myocarditis is caused by the same protozoa that causes African sleep sickness. Now, I don't know why I found that interesting. It was always a big thing when I was a kid, African sleeping sickness. I would say to my mother, I don't want to go to school today because I have African sleeping sickness. <laughs> she didn't buy it. She didn't buy it. She was smarter than that. Okay. Um, let me just see right here. Okay. Researchers in Japan are studying the effects of of myocarditis triggered by hepatitis. Um, so, so myocarditis is common, and you can see all of these bacterial and viral, protozoal and so on infections. And you can imagine that in third world countries, uh, the, the causes of diarrhea uh, and amoeba, you know, can cause my, myocarditis. There's really absolutely no way at this point to get a handle on this disease in the third world countries. And even in the U.S., I mean, really, even in the U.S., it's nigh unto impossible. Okay, what's in the name? This is the third major challenge to fundraising for myocarditis, is the lack of name recognition. Myocarditis, also known as inflammatory heart disease, is called many things in the media, but not necessarily myocarditis. The New York Times reported the autopsy results in the last several pages of the sports section, following the Olympic marathon time trials for the Beijing Olympics, where one of the runners died during the race. And they were reporting sometime afterwards that this young man had died of focal scarring. Do you know what the word focal means? Patchy, patchy, dots, like polka dots of scarring on the heart. That is typically what inflammatory heart disease or myocarditis causes as it begins to heal. So this runner had myocarditis, an opportunity loss when the New York Times reports it as focal scarring instead of a past infection of myocarditis. 
You see? Opportunity lost. Randy Travis, we talked about him, country singer, became seriously ill recently while on tour in Texas. And the very first news reports that I saw in New York, the tape that runs across the bottom of your TV station in the major channels, 2, 4, and 7, said viral infection of the heart. I saw one article, which, which is myocarditis. I saw one article that said initially he had myocarditis. And thereafter, he had heart failure, cardiomyopathy, a stroke, but myocarditis was never mentioned again. Never mentioned again. And this was a prime example of the media not calling a spade a spade. They don't do us a favor in terms of seeking grant money to study this disease when they don't use the proper terminology. So whatever you do, you use the right terminology. Every, every chance you get, myocarditis, 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 and maybe someday we'll make a difference there. When someone has cancer, they think of themselves as having cancer their whole lives. And when someone has myocarditis, it's kind of a point in time. You understand the difference of what I'm saying? So people don't think of themselves necessarily, unless they have chronic myocarditis, which is another form of the disease, but they don't necessarily think of themselves as having myocarditis forever. It was a point in time. But when someone has cancer, you think your whole life of, I have cancer, I have cancer, I have breast cancer, I, do you know what I mean? So cancer, 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 cancer is repeated, but myocarditis is not. Okay, in all fairness, however, Sometimes myocarditis is not identified as the cause of death for many months later, and we talked about that very uh, recently in Lori's talk. 